Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Noimulator, and this is City Skylines 2. Earlier today, the folks at Colossal Order dropped Dev Diary number 3, and I'm here to bring you all the details and analysis that you're going to need to take your hype train to the next level. There's lots of juicy details to talk about, including a brand new concept called Development Points, so be sure to stay around until later in the video when we talk about how this concept is going to change the way you develop your cities in City Skylines 2. Now, before we dive into all the details, I want to take a moment to do a little bit of shameless plugging. First, I wanted to let you know that later this week, I'll be dropping episode one of a brand new City Skylines series that I'll be focusing on all the way up to the release of City Skylines 2. I've done a lot of planning and preparation for this farewell city, and I'm really looking forward to building a great city with you all. So please make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you won't miss out on any of the action. Finally, if you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to hit that like button because it really does make a difference. And if you have time to take it to the step further, please drop a comment down below to help with engagement so that this video can reach as many people on YouTube as possible. Even if you just drop your favorite emote, it all works the same. Now, enough of the self-promotion. You folks came here for Dev Diary details, so let's get right into it. So what we're going to do is start by talking about the public transportation side of things before moving on to talking about how cargo will move around the map. As you might imagine, we start with buses and taxis, and buses in particular being the backbone of any city's transportation network. The biggest revelation we learn about when it comes to buses in City Skylines 2 is that you will now be able to set up intercity routes through the bus depot. Therefore, buses will no longer just be local, and that should add a new dimension to how citizens move in and out of your city. When it comes to taxis, the biggest news is simply that they are going to be included in the base game. Whereas in the first iteration of City Skylines, where the After Dark DLC was required. And one additional thing to note for both buses and taxis is that each of them will be capable of upgrading into electric versions from their respective depots. When it comes to trains, there are a lot of new things to talk about, but there is one new piece to the puzzle that changes everything about how trains will exist in your cities, and that is the introduction of the rail yard. With City Skylines 2, no trains exist before you build a rail yard in your city, and I just have to say how excited I am to hear this news. The level of realism that this introduces to your city design and the amount of planning that you're going to need to incorporate is going to take things to a whole new level. The rail yard is where all trains will spawn and get maintained, and the only way your networks, both passenger and cargo, can operate is if they are connected to your rail yard. So any ideas you have for trains on your map is going to have to be planned out in detail to ensure that trains can get onto all of your tracks. But that's not the only news we learned regarding passenger trains. Trains are not only a great way to get large quantities of new people onto your city from, from off the map, but will also be an efficient way to transport large quantities of people from one part of your map to another. So you can imagine a scenario where you're using all corners of your map and creating a number of different communities with long stretches of open land in between, and connecting these communities with trains will be the ideal solution. Also, train stations will be able to upgrade with additional platforms and connected to another form of public transportation within the facility, adding another layer of realism to how people move throughout your cities. When it comes to the tracks themselves, you'll be able to build two-way tracks, double tracks, as well as one-way tracks, and these tracks can be built elevated, cross bridges, through tunnels, as well as with cut and fill. And when you connect tracks to stations, the game will rebuild switches automatically and the trains themselves will be capable of driving backwards as well as forwards to utilize these switches. When it comes to public transportation, every growing city comes to a point where they need faster and more efficient ways to move their citizens around. The last thing anyone wants to do is get onto a bus, take a long bus ride to a terminal, and then have to get onto another bus to take another long bus ride just to get to another part of the same city where their journey began. So when the time comes that your streets are clogged with too many people trying to get to too many places, you've got two options to upgrade your transportation network and alleviate the congestion. The first is trams. And the great thing about trams in the city skylines too is how much more flexible they are in terms of implementation into your city. Using the replace tool, you'll be able to add tram tracks directly onto your existing road networks with ease. Or additionally, they can be run directly over the train 
when the need to avoid traffic arises. Also, as seen in an earlier development diary, tram tracks can even be placed directly over pedestrian roads, adding yet another layer of flexibility in how you lay out your routes. And that can be really handy when you've got an already bustling city established and you're not really interested in getting out the bulldozer and flattening blocks of developed land. Now, when you're really pressed for space and your citizens are craving a fast way to get across your sprawling metropolis in a hurry, you need look no further than the subway. Despite the high initial investment, the speed and high capacity of this solution can be incredibly valuable to your transportation network. And perhaps the best part of all is that if you wish, the entire thing can be built directly under your city with very little disruption. Merely squeeze in a few metro terminals in between some of the buildings and your citizens will have easy access to a whole new world of fast and efficient travel. And this speed will be a very important factor for your adult citizens who value their time most of all when making their pathfinding calculations. And one final note, just like with buses and taxis, both trams and subways will need their own dedicated depot in City Skylines too. There are two final ways your citizens will be able to move around via public transportation. One is on the water, the other in the air. For those of you who enjoy setting up ferry networks for your citizens, you won't need to wait for DLC in City Skylines 2 to do so, as passenger harbors will be included directly into the base game, and along with them some very nice looking boats, if I do say so myself. These harbors will be capable of shipping people not only around your own city, but with access to seaways on the map edges, intercity travel via boat will also be an option for your citizens. And the final option for passenger travel comes in the form of the airplane. But with the, plane, with the airplane comes the exorbitant cost of building an airport, not just the financial cost, but the land cost as well. However, for citizens willing to pony up the cost of a ticket, there is no faster way to travel from one city to another. Next, it's time to talk about cargo and how you're going to be moving it around. Outside of delivery trucks and vans, there are three major ways to move goods both around your city as well as off your map to other cities. Most important of which is the backbone of any resource transportation infrastructure, and that is via the train. One major change that we see in City Skylines 2 is that the cargo train terminal will act as a sort of distribution center, as it will be used by local companies as storage for both incoming and outgoing cargo. Therefore, whenever companies complete goods for order, they can deliver them to the cargo terminal to be stored until the train is available to pick them up and deliver them to their next destination. Alternatively, goods can be delivered into the city and stored until the local business requires them and sends a truck to pick them up. Of course, the biggest issue you'll need to deal with is going to be the traffic. So paying close attention to your road networks and ensuring that all of these trucks making pickups and drop-offs will be able to do so without clogging up your roads will be vital to the efficient operation of this pivotal cog in your industrial machine. While ships are much slower than trains, the one big value they do offer is the massive volume of product that they can carry. Two million pounds of it to be exact. Much like their train terminal counterparts, the cargo harbors associated with this form of transportation can also act as storage facilities. While these facilities also have the challenge of dealing with a lot of traffic coming and going, one advantage they do have is that they can be connected into the rail network and have large quantities of goods delivered via train. So, if you've got lots of stuff that needs to get somewhere, but you're not so concerned about how long it's going to take, then a cargo ship is the perfect method for transporting your goods. Finally, we have air freight. And when it comes to delivering products via plane, you must first upgrade an existing airport with a cargo terminal. While planes don't have the capacity of trains or boats, the one thing they can do, of course, is get where they're going in a hurry. So when speed is the name of the game, this is the way to go. When it comes to making transportation lines of any kind, it will be important to understand the concept of how depots and yards will work in City Skylines 2. For those of you who've played the Transport Fever games, this concept will feel very familiar as the order of operations is essentially the same. Before you can do anything, you must first have the related depot and yard built, and from there you can build your stations or stops wherever you wish, and then use tracks or roads to connect your depot to them and each other before finally being able to build the line. 
the depots and train yard act as the spawn point for all vehicles, and without them, nothing will happen. Another new feature that also has roots in the Transport Fever games is the idea of waypoints. With waypoints, you can direct a route to avoid high volume roads or intersections, which will allow them to complete their circuit more efficiently and get your citizens where they need to go more quickly. So before we break down the various info views that you'll be able to enjoy while playing City Skylines 2, I think it is finally time to talk about development points. For those of you familiar with the first City Skylines, you'll know that without mods at least, different forms of transportation were unlocked at population milestones. What this did is create a fairly rigid schedule for how all cities would progress as they are built. With each milestone came a more and more advanced technology that allowed you to expand the capabilities of your cities one step at a time. With City Skylines 2, the only transportation that will unlock with milestones are the fairly early introduction of buses and taxis. After that, you will earn these development points, which can be used to unlock other transportation methods as you see fit. This way, you have more flexibility to build your city the way you imagine. If your vision includes the early implementation of a metro line, then you have that freedom. If you want to build a small tourist town and wish to have an airport available to feed you with tourists, then that too can be possible without having to reach any particular milestone. The final topic for today's development diary is what I'm calling info views. First, you can see here that using the new airplane line tool, airports can be manually connected to outside connections in all directions. Here is an example of the transport overview, which allows you to get a picture of the scope of all your transportation networks around your city, from the number of lines across the various forms of transit to the number of tourists and citizens using each mode on a monthly basis. You can also see the variety of cargo shipments being made and see how many routes you have and how much cargo is actually moving. From the line overview screen, you can see an individual breakdown of each line for all the modes of transportation both for public use as well as for cargo. Important information like how many vehicles are on each line, how many passengers are using the line, and the usage percentage of each line, which will allow you to decide if certain lines are worth having or determine if lines need more or less vehicles to handle the demand. And that is important because each depot has a certain vehicle capacity and it might be crucial to manage which lines get how much support given this restriction. And finally, we dive even deeper to see the operation of any one individual line and evaluate its performance. One important thing to note here is the ability to adjust the price of a ticket. As we learned last week, citizens have a number of factors to consider when making their pathfinding calculations. And just like with the ability to adjust the price of parking in various facilities, being able to adjust the price of public transportation is an important ability in managing your city and how citizens move around it. If your streets are clogged with cars, despite the fact that you have a comprehensive public transportation network, you can reduce the price of riding the bus or the tram or the metro, and perhaps bump up the price of parking in order to alter the calculations that are made by citizens when deciding where to go and how to get there. And that's it, folks. Everything you need to know about the public and cargo transportation development diary. Every week, we continue to learn more and more details about everything being put into the City Skylines 2, and if you're anything like me, you're getting more and more excited with the release of each one of these development diaries. If you haven't seen them already, or perhaps want to check them out again, you can find links to my breakdowns of the first two dev diaries in the description down below. Also, don't forget to tune in every Monday to check out the latest dev diary breakdown. And finally, keep your eyes peeled for episode one of our new city build coming out later this week. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time.